Yeah, so uh, apologies. Uh, we just dropped out there. First time in pff, yonks, roughly, that I can rem remember us um, having a technical difficulty. No, I don't remember us dropping out at all. Ever? Uh, ever. Yeah, uh, you obviously have eradicated the uh, first average. three years we were together. <laughs> So, apologies to anyone who's uh, missed out and for those who have dropped off completely. But uh, we were talking about Hearts against Rangers and then moved on to Celtic against Motherwell. Uh, Celtic with more than a few, I think, injury worries that Ange Postacoglu was... It's always one of those situations where international football, you wait, you see how many injuries you've got that's going to affect your overall squad. Yeah, and I think the Carter, Carter Vickers one is a big one for Celtic. I think he's... He, He's seen against St Mirren, he's a vital player at the back. Um, he's going to be missing again, Starfelt. So it's going to be again a makeshift back two. Um, but Celtic at home, you know, Motherwell playing well but no scoring goals. You know, you still expect Celtic to win the game comfortably with the squad they've got. But I think if you're Kevin Van Veen or you're Louis Moult and you see the two centre halves, you know, you think, mm, I think quite fancy today against their two gents and I think it probably Welsh. Yeah, the one, the one thing about it that you look at, Ruffy, if there's anything to pick up on what Tam mentioned there, is quite simply, that back line, Welsh, I thought, was exposed at times by St Mirren. If anything, you know, Stephen Hamill will have looked at that game and said, OK, here's where we still think there are, there are weaknesses that you can get at Celtic. Yeah, I think everybody uh, identifies that. And, and I think we've all said that, particularly away from home. But I thought Celtic might have struggled at Aberdeen or Hearts or Hibs or whatever. I don't think I saw that coming at St Mirren. Fortunately for Celtic, they're at home. Again, they'll have, I would, I would hazard a guess, 70% possession. I don't think they'll be under the cosh that much at home. If it had been away from home, it might have been different. But what St Mirren have done is they've given everybody a belief that Celtic can get beat on a given day. But I don't think it's at home. I think it would be away from home. So I would think Celtic will just pick up the reins where they left off and start scoring goals again. Yeah. Uh, I must just mention, apologies to anyone, um, because... Uh, the uh, stream went down there for the first time in, <laughs> I mean I just can't remember when but Hugh Scott clearly does remember he says welcome back guys did Ruffy kick the cables out again <laughs> that was the first thing I thought when I saw him looking about going uh, yeah. oh no please That's exactly what I thought. <laughs> yeah I, I don't know if you've noticed the difference this time around is uh, you know uh, maybe it's because I'm getting older and more mellow um when he kicked the cables out before, I really wanted to take all the equipment and scalp it right off his head. <laughs> Whereas now, um, you know, life is too short. It's as simple as that. Um, yeah, our reporter uh, Kerry Pollock was out at Motherwell this morning to get the thoughts of the opposition at Celtic Park on Saturday. I'm here at Fair Park where the Motherwell boss Stevie Hamill has been looking forward to their game against Celtic tomorrow. He says it's no secret the way Celtic start their games even though ball boys are on point at Celtic Park. But more importantly, his players should be out to impress. It's going to be difficult, we understand that, but you know the, the players have bought into everything we've tried to tell them so far and it's a game that they should be approaching with, with you know, a, a real encouragement and enjoyment and going and really proving it's a game as individual or as a collective that if you do well in, in, in terms of you personally, your reputation will do well. And Motherwell fullback Matt Penny puts it quite simply, three points is three points. I think every game is a big game really. Um, at the end of the day, it's three points is three points, whether it's against a team at the bottom of the table or a team at the top of the table. Um, so yeah, it's obviously they're at the top of the league, so deservedly at the top of the league, so it's classed as a big game, but like I say, we're going to get a result. Yeah, three points is three points, says Matt. Um, uh, although some you have to blow out of your back end harder than others, Tam, as you will testify to. Yeah, three points at Celtic Park's a lot different for, you know, beating us at Mother of like at home. <laughs> you know, Mother will go there, huge underdogs with the bookies. Um, Celtic, imperious at home. You know, the record at home has been tremendous under Ange Postacoglu, and I just can't see Mother will get anything. I think they'll score. I do think Mother will score. You know, looking at that, there's going to be changes at the back. I think Van Veen, Mo, I think Mother will have got a goal in them, but Celtic will score three or four. You think so? Yeah, 4-1 uh, to Celtic. 4-1 to Celtic. It's strange you're saying that because obviously people are now, I think, looking and thinking, OK, maybe this is not as clear-cut as it was made out to be. Ange Postecoglou certainly is not going to have a knee-jerk reaction just because they lost uh, to St Mirren. If you, if you use a result of a game as a backdrop to question everything you do, then, mate, you, you'll go nuts in this game. So, you know, I don't... Like I said, every game is the same for us. Whether we win, lose, or draw, we look at the performance 
Um, you know, we understand why we didn't perform on the day. Uh, we give the feedback to the players and we move on. But there's nothing that comes out of one result that, you know, um, changes my outlook or my approach or, or what we, you know, sort of want to achieve as a team. OK, um, I've got Celtic to win 3-0. I've got Celtic to win 2 0. 4 1. 4 1. OK, um, it's all about opinions. Give us your opinion as well. And thank you to so many of you who've uh, rejoined us after that slight um, blip there. And uh, of course, I like the fact that <laughs> some people are saying they were, they were scrambling to check their own Wi Fi, wondering what the heck had happened. And uh, somebody who basically must come from East Kilbride, he says, um, Peter looking for 50 pence to put in the lecky. I was saying <laughs> that. Pay as you go, you're on a data. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh, it could come. Um, Gallant says Muller won't get anything tomorrow. Um, and Hugh says Peter, no need to panic. First league defeat nearly a year. Uh, he reckons it's going to be normal service resuming for nothing. Uh, so if they, if they get beat, is it a crisis? Uh, if they, Motherwell win. If Motherwell win, is it a crisis? Well, it's a crisis for Rangers. I, I think I think you're right. Uh, I think people will look. At, well. Celtic Rangers are only two games away for a crisis, isn't they, really? Two yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, do you know, it's a good point, actually, Ruffy, because, you know, I think overall, though, the, the the reason why I think a lot of Rangers fans were up in arms about the whole thing is it was three defeats and there was no goal scored and the manner of the Celtic Our one Hammonds. was really, really bad. And then the two... I don't, th I don't think... I think maybe some people were a wee bit overcritical in the Champions League ones. You know, they played well against uh, Lazio for a... Napoli. Napoli, sorry, for a wee while, uh, for an hour, and then lost a man. You've got to, you've got to cut them some slack. I thought they played really well at home. Mm. Ajax was just just terrible. But they're up against their top-quality outfits. That's I mean, what I'm saying. They, they lost to Napoli, and they lost to Celtic, and they lost to who was the other Ajax. one? Ajax. Ajax. If Celtic were to lose to St Mum, unbelievable. Yeah. Celtic yeah. are not going to lose tomorrow. Of course yeah. they won't lose, but I'm saying I'm oh, just throwing minute, it out oh, there. Oh, wait a minute, oh, wait a minute. I'm just throwing it out You can't say, of course, they won't no, lose. No, well, I've got Celtic to win two. No, no, all of the question I'm just asking is, is it, are Celtic the same as Rangers? If they lose two games, is that a crisis? Well, let's ask you. Is it a crisis if I they lose? It's a worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So now we're starting to gauge where he's going with us. So uh, if they lose two games, it's a worry. Is three games a crisis? Yeah, I would think so. Three yeah. games a crisis. So worry is love. That's your base level. Um, and what's below worry? Panic. <laughs> no, no, no. If it's worry there, and then crisis is up above it at three I'm games. If, so, if Celtic were to lose to St Martin, lose yeah. to Motherwell, I don't know who they've got next week. Just say it was Ross County. If they lost their three games, then people would be asking questions. Okay, okay. fantastic. Uh, now we've gauged where he's going with his his barometer on uh, if you don't win a game and if you consecutive back to back defeats. So we'll gauge that throughout the. Uh, the week and see where we go with it, Ruffy. So Aberdeen against Kilmarnock. Again, sometimes you've got a game that uh, it has been overtaken by issues off the park and the allegation of a sectarian statement from Kyle Lafferty has brought about, you know, the SFA charging him um, for alleged use of sectarian language, which could be a, a 10-game ban. It's a possibility. At his age... It, we don't want to see him involved in that sort of thing. At his age, is that the type of thing that might just force him to say, like, I'm at the end of my career anyway. It's over. Ten games is a lot, Tam. Yeah, I think you've got, what did you say, 35? Um, listen, I think he's going to get hit hard with SFA. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I think that, um, you know, something like that, you know, they've, they've got to you know, set a precedent. You know, that's totally unacceptable. And I think Kilmarnock are preparing for it now. You know, you've seen them, their statement yesterday saying that he's going to workshops and he's going to go and help, you know, kids, you know, speaking about race, uh, sectarianism. So I think they're preparing for him to get a big ban. And yeah. I think the SFA are going, to, are going to give him a big ban. So if he misses 10 games, 10, 15 games, I mean, that takes you near enough, you know, at the end of the season. So you'll have to wait and see if he, if he goes ahead next season. But... You know, she's stupid it from. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't send out a good message. And Kilmarnock have to take that stance. And they, they had to be quick about it as well, uh, Ruffy, because the evidence looks damning. Still a decision to be made, though. Yeah, I think most clubs do act very, very quickly when something like that happens. You know, we've seen the reaction uh, from certain segments of certain club. The fans, you know, 
want it dealt with right away. They don't want their club to be associated with anything like that. And uh, I think the club have done well, you know, the way they've reacted to it. I think the 10, ten games is a bit of an exaggeration. I think he'll get six. Yeah? I'm not saying he shouldn't get ten, but no. I think ten's just a bit of a figure somebody's threw out there. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll wait and find out. Uh, either way, he hasn't really set the header on fire in the top flight anyway, Tom. No, I um I think he's found it a lot more difficult. I think Kamala obviously in the championship were winning a lot of games and had a lot of pressure and creating chances. You know, they're not getting that in the Premier League. You know, they're sitting near the bottom of the league for a reason. So no, he's not been at his best in the Premier League and as he's getting to the tail end of his career, so it'll just be interesting to see if if he can that does continue playing any any next season. Yeah. Uh, as ever, throughout every season since I've been working and watching and reporting on Scottish football, sometimes the off the field antics, you know, are, are things that dominate the back pages. Um, Aberdeen uh, also have an SFA charge to answer to. It's Jim Goodwin's comments about Ryan Portis. Uh, I think Jim uh, he's hoping that common sense will prevail. Um, but I think Jim knows, I think he knew the minute he said it that there's a ban coming. He's got to get banned. You, you can't come out and say his players are cheats, you know, as a manager. You know, and particularly if it's, if it's totally blatant, then I could maybe understand. But for me, it wasn't blatant. It was two players coming together. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a soft penalty. But, you know, he's obviously, he's obviously got preconceived ideas about Ryan Portis before he even got into the game. You know, he's been done in the past with him, maybe going down the box or winning a penalty and he's he's obviously said to the referee before the game as well, you know, you need to watch him. And as soon as that's happened, he's obviously just exploded and he's not going to get away with that. I think the SFA again will hit him hard because unless it's a blatant, blatant cheating, you know, you can't have managers coming out and accusing players of cheating when it's certainly no black and white. Yeah, I think I've got Aberdeen just to edge this one. I, fa I fancy Aberdeen. I, I, I know Ruffy's been... You know, speaking about Kamal, but nearly nearly bottom of the table, and I'm starting to come round to that as well. I just don't think they've got enough quality, and you know, he's he's padded the squad out a little bit. But that was a squad that was, let's be honest, it was 45 minutes away from possibly losing the championship. I'm not getting promoted if I broke the held on, you know, down at rugby park. So, and I don't see great changes to that team. So, I think if Kamal can stay up this season, I think they'll be doing well. Yeah, I always think, Ruffy, the real kind of a test is around about January. Once you start to see <coughs> Sherman, you know, starting to panic mm -hmm. and say, OK, we're going to back him. Uh, the one thing that De Derek does have in his favour, though, is he, he's fairly pragmatic in the way he approaches games. If anything, it, they'll probably be dogged and try and just avoid, uh, you know, defeat more often than not. He likes to keep his, his defence tight. So I think that's the one thing that is an element of him that, Suggest to me that I still think Kelly can escape the drop, but I might be wrong. Well, they, these are the places he's got to go and show that. The team's got to show that. They've got to go to Petodre and maybe dig out a draw, and then and then you, you go away and then you look at the next game and say, look, we drew at Petodre, let's get a win at home. Yeah. You know, they've, they've been struggling to get points here and there. And, and generally in our league, you know, if the next up until Christmas time, if you're in the bottom three, you're usually in the bottom three right to the end. Yeah, you're scraping for everything, so you got to start winning games. Yeah, because you, you, we're looking at Aberdeen, we're looking at Hibs, who were struggling last year, but we're all thinking they're going to move up. You know, so that that a gap may appear at some stage. Uh, who have you got? I've got Aberdeen to win two 0 Okay, Ross County against Hibs. Uh, of course, listen. Um, I, I think the move is imminent to Real Madrid. Uh, for Ryan Porteous because <laughs> it's one game and there's a fair amount of hysteria has followed it. The boy played out of his skin, which was fantastic, Tam, because I think when you, sometimes there's that, that little bit of moment, I, I always call it a sliding doors moment, he's played out of his skin, he knows he's going to leave Hibs in the summer. And if he could say he's an international player as well, it boosts his chances of getting even more money. Um, and he can sign that pre-contract, so I think it doesn't matter what Hibs say, I think he's off -ski. Yeah, I think he's off -ski as well. I think you can tell by Lee Johnson's comments, you know, about his contract. I think that um, as a young boy coming through, sometimes you can be neglected in terms of contracts. You know, when foreign players coming in get more money, or if you sign someone for a fee, they get more money. But I think Ryan's is certainly on in the high earners budget at Easter Road. So unless Hibs come out and Ron Gordon comes out and offer him silly money, you know, up with Martin Boyle, you know, six, seven, eight grand a week, then I don't think Ryan's going to be interested in staying at Hibs. If he gets that that type of money, <clears> then it maybe maybe get him to, to, to stay a couple of more seasons and, and maybe Hibs get a fee for him. But Hibs are going to need to push the boat out massively in terms of in terms of money to get him to stay. It's quite unusual for a manager to come out and say he's underpaid. 
Yeah, well, he knows what he's on. We're guessing, you know. And he, no, no, but and if, if, you, it, if you've got a chairman, aye. if you've got a team, and uh, you, you've got a board there, yeah. um, and then you, your manager comes out and says he's underpaid. Yeah, but the manager will know the players that have come in what they're on, you know, and, and, and he'll be looking at the gap, and that's why he's come out with it, and he's just been realistic. If there is a gap of three or four thousand pounds, then he's got to rectify it. But I agree with both of you. He's already said he wants to go down to England. If he goes down to England, he'll get more than seven or eight grand a week. Yeah, and of course, there's a wee bit of uh, consternation between uh, Ryan Porteous and the uh, Aberdeen um, boss, uh, Jim Goodwin, which Lee Johnson had a wee comment on. He wasn't too happy with some of the comments about Porteous. Well, personally, I wouldn't do it in terms of uh, speaking about opposition's player. I think the incident, listen, we're, we're all very emotive after games because we all want to win um, and like when I actually look at the incident itself um, I thought I thought it was 50-50 still that's exactly what yeah. I said that, I think that's yeah, if it was a blatant who was the boy Alex Schalk for Ross County against Celtic where he just anticipated the contact and dived yeah. to win a penalty yes if Brendan, I think Brendan Rodgers did come out and say he was a cheat after the game I'm, I'm you know, not 100% on that but something like that where it's yeah. blatant dive I think you can understand the manager coming out and say it but that was a 50-50 incident both were at it yeah. soft penalty if you're going to, if a manager's going to come out every time there's a soft penalty given against you you know calling an opposition player a cheat you know all the managers are going to be in the stand in Scottish football yeah absolutely well listen uh, Rebs are now up at Ross County they could go into third place uh, with a win uh, Ruffy but I, st I still th I don't know about you but I still think Hibs are kind of a it's, it's, it's like driving a car and it stutters every now and then. Yeah, well, they're another one that need to prove to everybody they're good enough to go away from home. Uh, I just hope my nominated team get their finger out and, you know, try and get some wins. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, just a bit, drop <laughs> just about to say to you, Jan Nestaggy, who oh. watches this show regularly, Ross County 10th, haven't won a league game know. since the 20th of August against Kilmarnock. You've put the kiss of death yeah, on them. I know, I know I have, but... Uh, this is the kind of game I'll keep looking at and going, right, guys, we need to start winning this. But I'm like you, I'm not convinced with Hibs yet. I do think they're good enough to go up there and get something, but um, I might be drastically wrong. Uh, yeah. I, I think I've went Hibs to win 2-1. Have I you? I think I've got a draw for this one, Tom. I've went for Hibs. I think that Hibs, yeah. uh, two good results at home. You know, Kamarnock and Aberdeen going into the break. That away form's concerning. Lost to Livingston, you know, not that long ago, so... Lost to St Mum. So, you know, they've got to go and prove that they can do it away from home at home. Big pitch, fans behind it behind them, a lot easier away from home. Ross County, more difficult game, but Hibs are starting to get players back. You know, McGeady's on his way back, you know, um, McGuinness on his way back, Nisbet's back training. You know, they've signed McCurdy, you know, Boyle's there, Kukarevic, the striker. They've got a big squad, they've got competition for places, so... There's absolutely no excuses now. Lee Johnson's got a, a, a very healthy squad to pick from. They've got to get up there, they've got to roll the sleeves up, they've got to do the hard graft and hopefully their quality comes through and I'm backing it to come through and I think they'll win 2-1. Yeah, OK. Uh, we'll wait and see. You can give us your thoughts on that, just in case uh, you're wondering. Uh, there was a bit of a technical issue. It dropped out. Um, of course, I think, actually, now that I think about it, uh, Ruffy, um, maybe the, the, the stream and the... the Obviously, the the Wi-Fi dropped out because they're not used to Tam looking as smart as the uh, the jacket. Overload. The jacket maybe provided interference on the the, the flux capacitor, mm -hmm. and that pushed the, the lithium crystals over the edge. So it usually, happens. that's <laughs> so that's <laughs> probably why we went off. And Tam, I said Jacob would go well with Ruffy's trainers. Yeah, right. absolutely. Ske Skechers, <laughs> Skechers, and grey <laughs> grey jackets <laughs> don't really go down well on a Friday. Um, so apologies if you were wondering what had happened to the stream don't forget to subscribe it's i think it's i think that's maybe five or six years since the last time i've encountered that rough view i don't think we've carried it in here no we've definitely no, out on the road you would expect things yeah absolutely have we encountered it in the, the the old big studio we were in have we encountered it there no, did we no, i don't I think, think we so. did no i think it's only been in an, an outside broadcast for some unfortunately sometimes a switch goes <laughs> <laughs> yeah from you uh, anyway uh, Ronnie Chapman was our competition winner who won uh, Ruffy's Club so well done Ronnie we'll try and contact you and get those out to the address um, we'll almost certainly <laughs> contact you um, so uh, Gallant says I Peter you owe us 15 minutes over time <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I, I, I mean, it's, it's a worthy point, but I don't think uh, I don't think the boys will be too happy about it because these two are mercenaries. Um, anyway, uh, crack on St Mirren Livingston. Um, I'm going to go to this game because, as I mentioned to Ruffy, <laughs> to Ruffy, I like to see lots of other teams. You've got to go and see other teams, Tom, for yeah, God's sake. I'm bang it up, a cracker. <laughs> <laughs> well, St so, so Mirren, I think, are four, four clean sheets at the last five, St Mirren. Well, they're playing, they're playing well. well. Playing well. Uh, solid at the back. Um, Livingston don't score a lot of goals, so. Keep an eye on yeah, I hope not. Actually, I, 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 I just, I've got a, I've got a sneaky feeling about this one because the the confidence boost from the way they played against Celtic, it would be, I mean, Stephen Robinson just pull his hair out if they if they don't really step up to the plate against Livingston. Mm-hmm. They're at home again. The fans will be there in great numbers, I think, because of what happened before. Yes, and uh, we spoke about it. You know that ever since that uh, one against Celtic, the place would be buzzing. You know, the dressing would be buzzing, the training would be buzzing, everybody behind the scenes, the workers, everybody in the offices will be, you know, really looking forward to coming into their job. And that's why they have to win against Livy. They really need to go in and put another show on. It's okay doing it against Celtic. But teams like Livingston, you've got to take three points at home. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, by the way, Livingston are in good form. Two back to back wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, we all know that uh, Livy's strength is at home. You know, and they do go away from home. They, they do pick up points like Dundee United. I think they went up the Aberdeen as well. So they're a dangerous, dangerous item to take on board. You know, you know you're going to get a team who's going to be scrapping right until the end. And sometimes near the end, they get a goal when you don't think they're going to get it. Well, St Mirren, four wins out of five, as Tam rightly pointed out. And uh, David Martindale uh, said he knew that the, the win against Celtic was on the cards. I think you've got to say it was a surprise, but... When I watched the first 10, 15 minutes of the game, it probably became less of a surprise. I thought St Mirren set up very well, and you'd made a few changes, um, and you could tell it was going to be a difficult game. But I think that's testament to Scottish football. I think it just shows you the level you need to get to every single week to pick up points in the Premier League. Yeah, absolutely. So um, again, Livingston against St Mirren. How do you see that one going? Give us your thoughts on it. Liam Fox will be uh, one of those men striding out with the chest puffed out because he's finally got the job on a, on a two-year deal as Dundee United manager. And he'll be out there hoping for a victory against St Johnson. Yeah, I want to start well. I think that they're, you know, Dundee United sitting at the foot of the table. And I, th- I don't think anyone's seen that after beating Alkmaar. You know, you were at the game one nothing. <laughs> There was a lot of, you know, a lot, a lot of stick, and so I think that, you know, going to that game, Liam Fox has has got to get off to a flyer. I think they will get a point. I think that St Johnson looked good this season for me. I thought they would be nearly bottom of the league, but they've signed some good players: Ryan McGowan, Nicky Clark, Jamie Murphy. Um, I think they'll get a point, but uh, Dundee United need to start picking up points um, because I think they're foot the table for a reason. They've not been good enough so far. And uh, they've got to they've got to pick it up. Yeah, I, I think I'm in, I think I've just gone mad for the draws. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Rocky, yeah, a lot I of tight can't... games, I think. I yeah, it's a lot of tight games, isn't it? Yeah, but Dundee United really need to get their act together. Obviously, it takes a wee while to recover for losing nine goals at home. You've got to get the fans back on board. This is the kind of game you would look at and say, right, we get a win here. Fans will accept that, but I think they've got St Johnson at the wrong time. I think St Johnson was struggling on it early on, but they've seemed to get their act together. And Nicky Clark's been a good signing for them, and you would expect him to be there or thereabouts. So I think I went for a draw as well. Yeah, Thomas McDougall says Dundee United against St Johnson, a yawn of a game. <laughs> <laughs> Nicky Clark will be wanting to go back and want his old team. That's you know, it's, it's always a thing when you're an ex striker. I went through it, obviously, you know, I went back to a, a lot of ex clubs. And there's always a wee bit of added edge, a wee bit of extra needle uh, to want to go back and prove them wrong for letting you go or whatever. Have you been able to do that? Yes, I've done it a few times. I've done it. Um, I've done it for uh, Dundee against Falkirk. I was at Falkirk and went to Dundee. I sc- scored for Falkirk, sorry, against Dundee. And uh, did you celebrate? Oh, I went mental. Going in front of the Dundee fans. Yeah, uh, but. It's, again, this respect thing, you don't celebrate when you score against an old team. I, I don't understand that at all. I think yeah. when you score a goal, there's an explosion of joy you know, goes within you, and it's very difficult to, to keep that in. Are there any exceptional circumstances? There are exceptional circumstances. Well, okay. You leave the club in good faith. Well, no. Somebody bumps you. <laughs> no, you no, no, right. Well, I'm just saying, you've, you've played for Dundee, right? Then you moved to Falkirk, right? Did you move directly to Falkirk? 
Uh, I don't think so, no. No, right. Because I, I'm looking at some players. No, there was one. I'll tell you when there was one. Right. I was at Dunfermline. Uh-huh. And uh, I fell out with Jim McIntyre. And I went to Colorado Rapids and come back. Went to, where did I go? Right. Come back to Air, Air United. Right. And we went back to East End Park and Jim McIntyre was struggling. And I was with United and I scored the winner. We won one nothing. And I did run by the dugout and give it, get it up you, you Jim McIntyre. Wow. Yes. And we won one nothing. Right. So, so that's, <laughs> is there any, well, I should, I should, I should, re, I need to rephrase the question. Has there been any situation where you've scored a goal and shown a bit of respect no. to the previous player? No. no. Not at all. Okay. Because right. I'll tell you why. The only reason I'm asking you is because I remember, and it came right into my head the minute you say that here, there are exceptional circumstances where I know a lot of players, and one of them, of yeah. course, was Henrik Larson. Um, Alan Thompson heads the ball back, Larson's in the Barcelona strip, just pops it into the back of the net, and boy, you should have seen his face. Um, yeah, I think, it's as, as I said there, if you've been at a club for five or six years and you've had a great time, a great rapport with the fans, yeah. and you leave amicably to another club, they sell you on or something, yeah. but if you get treated the way Tam said he's been treated, <laughs> why not, yeah. you know, if, if you fell out with the club or the manager or no. whoever, so quite... I mean, the best one, the best celebration is Andy Bayor. Oh, yes. That was, oh, honestly, yeah. see, I've oh, seen boy. that, I loved that. Yeah. I was mad. Well, funnily enough, I agree with you on a lot of things. I mean, if I score a goal, it's against your old club. I am in oh. there celebrating big time. But Andy Bayor, no, I would have, that was just over the top, wasn't it? It was just oh, mental. It. it was oh. It was absolutely mental. Anyway, uh, there's your there's your card. Can I just show you something? And, and I hope I've got his name here. Um uh, one of the guys uh, who watches the show on a regular basis uh, sent us in a photograph, I think, with his brothers, and and I can't, I can't, I can't believe um, that I, uh, uh, I'll show it on Monday, and I'll tell you why I'll show the picture on Monday, Ruffy, um, because uh, obviously I've come away here without my script on his note on his name, and he's he's in the picture with his brothers. And they're wearing the 1978 Scotland strip. It is actually a, a picture from 1978. It's an absolute belter. I think you'll love it. Are they at a game? Are they no, no, they're just, 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 just three the of them in the house. Good. And it's got the old sepia tone through because it's that old, mm -hmm. but it's a belter. Um, I'll, I'll, we'll put it out next week and let everybody see. It's well worthy of it. Um, anyway, thanks to so many people who uh, send us messages, pictures of their man caves, pictures of them in their strips going to football matches, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, and thank you to everyone for offering their thoughts on the SPFL and who's going to come out on top and who is going to obviously come a cropper. Um, we're definitely, I can promise you, going to get more and more competitions and we're going to get that predictor. Um, up and running for everybody else to join in for prizes, Ruffy, as well, yeah, which I think yeah, will be... We like get challenged, don't we? We like get, we like. That will be great. I'd like to get, get more, more of a challenge as well, because I'm, I'm not getting a challenge at the minute in the predictor. So yeah. How far ahead are you? I don't know, more but I'm, I am yeah. top. I, th I don't think you're, uh, I don't think you're yeah. that far ahead, yeah. um, uh, to be perfectly honest with you. So I wouldn't I've still got to get out of second gear. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ruffy, your boys, home to Morton. Yeah, they were expecting a hard game. Uh, Morton are a hard team to beat. Uh, we do get them. He's got them very well organised. So, but it's the same old, same old. And got to win three points. Got to get three points at home. Got to win their games. Disappointed with the finish against Cove. Or so much winning that game. <laughs> <laughs> Here it comes. Could have been five up. <laughs> but we yeah. won there at the end of the day. So no. Big crowd. Hospitality is completely sold out. I don't know wow. what is it, Morton. Morton bring a big, big uh, contingent of supporters. Well done to them. Uh, it's great to be in a, a stadium when you've got away supporters and there's a large amount. Unfortunately, some teams don't bring 20 or 30, but yeah. they make it a right good atmosphere. Yep, and it's nip and tuck up there because uh, Dundee, Inverness, Queen's Park, here yeah, United, all hot on your heels. Good league this season. I think it's going to be really, really tight. Um, but uh, again, with your budget, you should win it. I was at the party at Thistle Golf Day the other day and yeah. some of the players were there and what a squad they've got. Yeah. I mean, that was the reserves that was playing the other day, I think, and there's about 40 of them. Yeah, absolutely. It's a squad at Thistle, about 70. 
No, I think it's 28 somewhere. Yeah, um, okay, here's the, here's the English Premier League for the weekend if you fancy watching football down south. I certainly enjoy it myself. Uh, Arsenal against Tottenham is going to be an absolute belter. Bournemouth, Brentford, Crystal Palace, Chelsea, Fulham, Newcastle, Liverpool against Brighton. That's before they take on Rangers at Anfield on Tuesday night. Southampton, Everton, West Ham, Wolves, Man City against Manchester United 2 o'clock on Sunday Leeds United against Aston Villa and then on the Monday it's Leicester mm -hmm. against Nottingham Forest so there's a couple of belters in there take all the other games out <laughs> <laughs> you'll be watching the other games Arsenal. well uh, to be fair there's two crackers I mean Arsenal against oh. Tottenham is a belter uh, and then of course Man City Man United That's isn't it, it? Oh. the quality that's in show you know you expect you know, for them to up a good a good performance. I'm I'm interested in the, the Liverpool side to see if they tamper with their team with a European. Do you think they'll rest rest people? No, no I think they'll, they'll go full tilt. Yeah, yeah. And also the other thing about it, albeit on the Saturday, Tam, winner of the North London derby goes top. Yeah, I think Arsenal and Tottenham will, will be up there this season. Arsenal started really strongly. Um, I think that's a game if Arsenal can win, you would really think they'll the real deal this season to challenge for the title. But Spurs again. Under Conte have been very, very good. So that's got all the makings of a cracking game, actually. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the City United game uh, is going to be a belter as well because how far have United come under Ten Hag? A, a shaky start. Now it looks as if things are looking good for them. But Manchester City with uh, Erling Haaland have just been fantastic. And uh, both managers offered their thoughts in the big game. I think can go to the stadium with a, OK, put us pressure. Uh, it's important they, that we can feel the pressure of them, especially in the open as well, and and demand the best of ourselves. We need it. So always, I want tomorrow they are active. They are, they come to enjoy, to be passionate. There's a lot of space for improvement. We have to improve, and but uh, it gives us um, yeah, just positive that we are in the right direction. But it tells us also we have to work really hard. Yeah, both teams. Uh, who are you going for the, the United City? Uh, Man City? I'm going to go for Man City, but just when you said Man City, uh, Man United, as soon as you mentioned the two teams, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? A game, something spectacular. Rooney. Rooney overhead kick. Yes. Unbelievable. Yeah, and uh, Michael Owen. And the, the is that fair? Yeah. The Last minute, 4 three. Just, yeah. yeah. Um, two, great, two great goals. Um, and of course... <laughs> <laughs> there is a small matter of Harry Maguire thrown in against Erling Haaland. Oh, oh, talk about walking I down think, the I, tunnel. I think Harry Maguire's got an injury, which is a huge boost for, for Man United. Yeah, absolutely. I hope, well, listen, if he's not playing, he'll be absolutely delighted. He can watch uh, Erling Haaland destroy them. Um, I'm going to go for City as well. You, Tom? City, Arsenal double. Oh, are you going for Arsenal on the double? I'm going to go, I think that one's going to end a draw. I, I like Tottenham. I think he's got them playing really well. Nah, yeah. I'd stick out for Arsenal. OK, uh, listen, thank you very much to uh, everyone for putting up with the fact we had a technical hitch. Um, it's very, very unusual. I must admit it caught us all um, by surprise there. But nevertheless, hit the subscribe button, join the football family. We are 24-7. If you download the uh, app, you'll get all the breaking football stories on our app. You can actually watch the programme live uh, on the app as well as at your leisure later on. It's got all the... Uh, unique video content that we have on show as well so hopefully you'll uh, be able to download the app hit the subscribe button for the YouTube because this month we've had a fantastic response Ruffy everybody more and more people joining in with the show and realizing that not only are we on five days a week at four o'clock but they can actually tap into so many other uh, programs and features that we're doing with our reporters out at the games. Yeah, I think the features are the big bit for me, you know, catching up, just not Scottish football, European football, English football, you know, it's what everybody wants. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as a lot of people have copied us, don't uh, take a cheap imitation. Some people have even copied our logo. Um, but nevertheless, uh, stick with PLZ, download the uh, app and also hit that subscribe button and you'll get to see guys coming in here wearing comfortable shoes and some people uh, wearing the best of gear. And I get the feeling, Tam, that you are wearing the best of gear because it's a special day today. 
Yeah, it is. It's my wife's birthday. I'd like you wish her a happy birthday. And Ruffy knows it is because I yeah. got a card this morning. Yeah. Oh, I think the flowers should be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, the good news is because you're out tonight, <laughs> I think Ruffy will be watching a Netflix yeah. movie with her. Just so, uh, yeah, absolutely. Enjoying the chocolate she bought. Her. <laughs> so, on that note, uh, happy birthday. Uh, what's your wife's first name? Mary. Mary, I keep I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. Uh, happy birthday, Mary. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot, but I knew Ruffy would remember. <laughs> happy birthday to you, Mary. Absolutely fantastic. I hope you have a great day and I hope the big man spoils you. Uh, from Tam, Ruffy, and myself, Peter. Thanks for watching.